Hello, my name is Chris Vecchi, head of the middle school at Ballarat Grammar School, and I'm going to give you an overview of the journeys that uh, will be provided to year eight and nine students at Ballarat Grammar in the September break. The four journeys that we'll look at tonight are the year eight and nine trip to East Timor, the eight and nine trip to Thailand, the eight trip to Timber Creek, and also the uh, mountain bike expedition that will happen on the Goldfields track from Bendigo to the top of Mount Bunningham. We'll also have a look at the Duke of Edinburgh scheme and also the uh, Year 8 Round Square Exchange. Uh, this is just a summation of what was covered uh, this evening at the, um, at the presentation evening, uh, and this is a condensed version of that. I hope, though, that it answers all of your questions, um, and application forms for these journeys can be found on the Middle School Journeys page on Nexus, and also your child can pick one up from the Middle School office. Uh, the reason for the journeys that we provide these, we want to make sure that all of our students are worldly citizens, uh, and they look well beyond themselves. This is about predominantly service opportunities, where students learn to have a really significant impact on others uh, in close or far away communities and, um, and doing that in an often challenging environment uh, where they've got to extend themselves, they have to work together and um, all of the skills that are being celebrated uh, more broadly in the world. It was terrific to see ANU come out and um, identify that they won't be accepting students on ATAR alone this year uh, or for 2020. They will be looking at those 21st century skills about internationalism uh, an understanding of diversity and um, a commitment to community through service and leadership. Uh, and so we are very much heading in the right direction with the trips that we're offering. Now, uh, with no further ado, I'll get stuck into the trips. Uh, the first trip we're going to look at is the Timor Less Day cultural immersion trip put together by uh, Mr. Rob Gray. Uh, Rob Gray has led eight trips to East Timor, has a really strong relationship with the people of Anaro, which is uh, up in the mountains in East Timor. Uh, a terrific experience, uh, 11 days in duration, open to year eight and nine students. As I mentioned, Anaro is up in the mountains of Timor Leste, uh, a, a beautiful location, uh, and students are exposed to communities though that uh, aren't as well um, resourced as, as our own. Uh, Timor Leste is, as you can see by the map, um, across the Timor Sea, so we fly into uh, Darwin and then make the trip across and then it's about an eight hour uh, trip um, up into the Anaro region and uh, uh, by four wheel drive and um, and that's where the, the real journey begins. Uh, a maximum of 10 students accompanied by three staff and they spend lots and lots of time uh, working with the young team race uh, school students uh, developing English programs to support their development of English. Uh, and so there's a lot of time spent in schools, but also a good amount of time spent uh, in downtime activities and engaging with them in soccer, volleyball, and, um, and other games. Uh, the children often follow the students back to the accommodation in the evening and the games go well into the, the night. Um, the Students are required to be self-sufficient, so there is responsibilities around cooking meals, um, maintaining uh, the accommodation, um, and also going looking for food at local markets, uh, trips up into the jungle uh, in the surrounding areas. Um, it is magnificent, magnificent countryside uh, and a very poignant look at the historical relationship that Australia has with uh, East Timorese. Um, but also the relationship that East Timor has with Indonesia. Uh, there's a picture of one of the markets, or a market similar to the one that the students would be visiting, where some of the produce and meals would be collated. Uh, the cost of the trip at this stage, and it's a little bit variable, but at this stage the guide figure is about $3,100. Um, and there will be a, a, a deposit um, required to confirm your acceptance of the offer. So the process is that students apply, um, and then once a student accepts a position um, on the, uh, the trip, then a deposit is paid and then the rest of the payment will be made later in term two. The second trip we'll look at is the Timber Creek trip up into the Northern Territory. Uh, we have a really strong relationship with Timber Creek. We've had six girls from Timber Creek 
uh, come down and um, and do their schooling with us. And there's currently two students from that community. Uh, Mr. Rob Grant runs this trip, and he has a terrific relationship with the um, the local Indigenous community up at Timber Creek, uh, particularly the Jones family. And um, this trip runs along similar timelines as the East Timor to East Timor trip. It is uh, for year eights only. We could take some year nines uh, if the year eights don't take all of the, the places available. Um, but currently we open it up initially just to year eight students. A beautiful part of the countryside, um, 600 kilometres southwest of Darwin. Uh, and oh, historically we've flown into Darwin and then uh, hopped in troopies and travelled down to Timber Creek. Uh, as mentioned before, two of our boarders do uh, hail from that region and that gives us a terrific in into that community. Uh, you spend much of your time on country. Uh, having been up there with Rob Grant, it's uh, terrific that you get to see locations around Timber Creek that very few non-Indigenous people have had the opportunity to visit. And um, and much of the time is spent on, on country understanding the Indigenous population and the way they have lived for over 60,000 years, the oldest um, existing um, population on the, on the planet. Uh, and, and it's something that we all should be very proud of. And, uh, and this gives you a unique insight into that. Um, terrific relationships are forged uh, with um, the students that attend Ballarat Grammar who live there, but also other um, people who live in that region. Uh, and lots of time spent at the school up in that region. I'll see a picture of that uh, soon. Three experienced teachers will be accompanying the students uh, on that journey. As I mentioned before, there's the image of the uh, of time spent with young people at the Timber Creek Primary School, uh, and we often support them with resources and have a terrific uh, relationship with that school. Uh, and the students will spend a good deal of time working with the students uh, in that environment. Um, it isn't just a holiday, this is very much a cultural immersion trip, so there's a lot of pre and post um, learning and unpacking about what our new understandings are uh, and how our perception of uh, different cultures has changed by this experience. Uh, five of them are conducted in the pre-trip uh, phase of the, um, the experience and then there's a number of them uh, post-trip and a terrific celebratory um, evening spent with families um, unpacking uh, the events that, um, that occur on this experience. And I think this is just symbolic of the relationships that are forged on the Timber Creek journey, a photo taken um, a few years back, um, but is is very symbolic of um, the experience that, that uh, the U.S. will have. As we entered, it's a nine-day camp, travelling by 12-seat minibuses and troopies, um, catering, so the students are responsible for a whole host of, uh, of, of maintenance, I suppose, in terms of food, accommodation, etc. Um, as I said, it's not a, a catered for um, experience. Um, it is, you're up there and you, you're genuinely living it, and the students develop a really strong sense of teamwork, uh, communication, collaboration through that. Lots and lots of sites, as I've previously mentioned, lots of learning um, and a real appreciation of some of Australia's magnificent uh, uh, countryside. Uh, $1,900 is the figure we look like um, being able to achieve uh, this experience for. And once again, a, a deposit will be required after um, successful applications are, um, are established and um, then we'll follow up with payments, further payments after that. Uh, the Goldfields tr Track uh, Mountain Bike Expedition was one that we launched last year and is a little gem of an experience. Uh, Richard Chignall is a, um, works for us but also works for Flow Motion, uh, which is a company who um, have a, run the uh, Bellarat Grandma Junior School Mountain Bike Camp and have done so for many years. And uh, Richard, along with our staff, lead the students. Um, from Bendigo all the way along the Goldfields track, which is a really challenging but achievable mountain bike um, expedition. Um, and they end up at the top of Mount Bunningham. Uh, in the lead up to it, there's a whole host of skills that students develop 
um, about mountain uh, bike craft, but also um, about camping, about self-management, about teamwork. Uh, it is not just a mountain bike expedition. This is much more than that. And speaking to the students went, who went on it last year, um, they are changed individuals uh, through the challenge that they face, but also the camaraderie that they developed on this journey. Uh, well worth considering. As I mentioned, it's a on the Golden Fields track, it's 180 kilometres, travelling 25 to 45 kilometres each day. That might feel like a lot for those that aren't skilled bike riders, but the training in the lead up to it prepares students well for that. There is student ownership from the, for the expedition, from the route plan to the locations where um, the camping occurs, to the activities that occur along the expedition, to the food that will be eaten, to the purchasing of the food, to the bike maintenance. Um, the whole gamut is... Uh, up to the students. As I mentioned, there's a whole lot of skills that are, are the intended outcomes um, and will just build on the success of last year's trip. Uh, we can, it'll be eight to 24 students. Um, students will be grouped into ability age groups um, and those groups will be supported by two to three adults. And we have a vehicle that picks up all of the gear, all of the tents, et cetera. So the bike riders only have day packs with them during the day. Uh, and then those supplies are delivered to them uh, in the evening where they can um, set up camp, cook dinner. And once again, a self-catering experience for all. As I said before, there's lots of leading up planning that occurs, um, lots and lots of different sessions that provide students with skills beyond mountain biking. Um, and a real understanding of how they cope in group situation, but also challenge environment and um, maintain good health through nutrition and um, and hydration. The student ownership, Richard took a photo of his wrist on the left-hand side. The students uh, identified that the rain was coming on a particular day last year, um, so they took it upon themselves to wake up at 5.30, uh, packed up and well on the, on the route by 7 a.m. Uh, and this is just Richard checking his watch uh, that I think it was 7.30 and they were well on the, on the, on the way. Um, and just um, on the right, just them stopping at a, um, at a fork in the road, I suppose, where they, uh, the leader for the day had to make a decision about which way to go. And it's also just the, the, the coming together of the group. Uh, so making sure that we don't get too spread out in that notion of team. Uh, everything's included in the trip. You do need to ideally have a tent, sleeping bag, um, or camp equipment, um, and also have your own bike, but bikes can be supplied with a really strong relationship uh, with the uh, with Navajo Cycles, but also Richard has access to bikes that can be hired, um, and all of that is workoutable. And the cost at this stage is looking like being $850, um, which is very accessible. Um, and moving on to Thailand, the last trip that we'll look at um, before we have a look at the uh, Eurite Exchanges and the uh, Duke of Edinburgh scheme. Thailand, uh, once again, another terrific experience, 11 days in Thailand uh, and working with a volunteer organisation called No Limits that we have a really strong association with. Uh, Mr Andrew Watson has organised this trip for many years. He lived and worked with a number of the staff from No Limits for um, numerous years. Um, and so has a really strong trust relationship with this group. Uh, we actually go up to the north part of uh, Thailand. We'll be flying into Chiang Rai, which is the second named city um, in Thailand, coming down from the north um, on that map. And then we work our way down to Chiang Mai. Uh, and so that's up in the Golden Triangle. Um, we'll actually get to the to the meeting place for the three countries up there, Myanmar, Laos, and Thailand. Um, and a lot of cultural experience up there um, and a greater understanding of things such as um, the, the uh, drug trade that um, used to exist in that region. Um, we'll go to some museums um, that give students good historical background of um, what used to exist and what now exists in that region and what um, the Thai king and his mother have done in that region. 
um, to make the farming uh, really prosperous in a in a more conventional sense than it once was. Um, and coming all the way down to Chiang Mai, and that's just a closer look at it. Uh, the main purpose of this working with No Limits is um, No Limits identify a service project for us. Um, and we go up there and we'll spend three days working, three or four days working in a village, um, predominantly at schools. And the last time we went, we um, built a kitchen for a school. Um, and that meant that the school could then provide meals for students who were attending school without meals. Um, and that was a large number of the students um, and just a remarkable experience for us all. This is another group of students who went earlier in the year last year, building a fence around the school. Um, to protect students from um, young students from leaving the school grounds and drifting off into um, dangerous waterways that surrounded that school. Um, and in the on the left hand side of the image, you can see two of the uh, no limit uh, leaders or volunteers, and they do this for free. This is a service project um, for them. Um, so they identify the project that they'd like to give their time to in their spare time, and then they use us to go up there and work with them to achieve their service project. So it's a terrific, um, it's a terrific win for both in that what we are doing is really meaningful because they are choosing to do it in their holidays. Um, and as you can see, it's very much hands on. We have students literally mixing the cement to build the walls. And here's the kitchen that we worked on last year. Um, as you can see, students on the right hand side actually mixing the cement. So all of the ingredients um, and then they'll bucket it across to where it needs to be laid. Um, and then the walls are built um, and then they're rendered uh, and so it is the whole package as you can see in the bottom right hand corner a lot of traditional um, dress experiences up in those uh, up in the, the mountain top villages um, lots of interaction with the locals uh, in those regions lots of interaction with the local school children um, and just a, a, an absolutely wonderful experience this was a kitchen we built last year um, it's called the Banarat Kitchen um, and a really a, a credit to all of those involved and it would be a similar project this year. Once again, more students, uh, more of our students interacting with uh, local students. Uh, once we've completed it, there is the opportunity to, or they've completed the service project, there is the opportunity to uh, have some downtime. And one of those experiences is um, looking after elephants that used to be in the logging trade and have been rescued and uh, and so we get the opportunity to look after them for, for the day. Um, we also get to drive through some beautiful uh, regions throughout Thailand and undertake a whole host of cultural experiences um, and having experienced this last year I cannot speak highly enough of, uh, of the cultural experiences that we undertook. We do some zip lining up in the mountains um, through the jungle, um, a real eye opener and um, tests the students courage and conviction um, but is also a terrific way for us to wind down after we've had um, three or four genuinely solid days of work and then to finish off the trip this year they'll spend a couple of nights uh, on floating houses that are in a massive dam um, and you spend all day floating around in a life jacket um, jumping off uh, the floating houses and the associated buoyant um, play equipment uh, and just a terrific environment. And, um, and then this year we're also going to go to where the, um, the young boys were stuck in the cave um, and the monument down the bottom right hand corner is, is built at the entrance to the cave and we'll go there and that's a really significant part of Thai culture now um, and we'll go and pay our respects to that um, and that'll just be a, an amazing opportunity for everyone involved. Uh, there is an outline of the program um, and for those that um, are successful in applying for this experience um, there will be an information evening where that's fleshed out more fully but I think I've covered most of those elements. The cost of the project is $2,800 or the experience. Um, there's also an expectation that um, every person, staff and students contribute $100 to the service project to assist with the um, the goods that contribute towards the um, the project effort. Um, it is limited to 24 students. We are looking at students in years eight and nine. Um, 
And for all of these trips, the applications do close on Thursday the 21st of March, which is relatively soon. Um, so we need to have families communicating uh, with each other about the intention of, uh, of your child um, so that we can then process the applications and um, have most of this, uh, the, most of the process well on the way by the end of the school break. I know that a lot of people are already planning things for the September holidays. And that's just further to uh, the application process. Uh, moving away from trips, so if you have any questions, further questions about the trips, please um, have a chat to your child. Um, you can contact me um, via uh, the best email to get me on is head of ms at bgs.vic.edu.au. Uh, and um, if you want any further information, um, and, but also speak to your child because um, your child also is in a position to access that information and they can also come and have a chat with me or I can point them in the right direction to one of the uh, trip organisers. Uh, trip event is something that all students should consider. It ties in nicely with the, some of the journeys that we're going on. Uh, it's internationally recognised and it's for students that are 14 years or older. Uh, and it is about challenge extending yourself um, getting into the outdoors, developing confidence, resilience, um, and, and character. Uh, the four parts to it, you need to undertake a physical recreation, develop a new skill, undertake a service, and go on an adventurous journey. Um, the first three must be for three months in duration, and one of them has to be six months. Um, and the adventurous journey um, has to be of a, at least a three-day um, expedition. Um, and I'll go back a slide if I can, and I can't. Um, and so if you want more information about the Duke of Edinburgh, um, please um, direct all inquiries to Mr Dave Merritt. We've got 70 students who are undertaking it as of last year, um, and we'd be hoping that a similar amount would undertake it this year. And it's a really commonsensical thing to do, um, considering our environment at Bellarmine Greenland where services promoted Recreation is promoted and new skills are always um, on offer there. So a lot of it can be just done through school programs. It is to do the Bronze Duke of Ed, which is the first year, first level, it's $165. Um, and that's the same for Silver and Gold if they were completed in subsequent years. You do have until you're 25 to complete it, but we'd be encouraging students to complete it before that. Um, and you can't start it until you are 14 years of age. Uh, and finally, the Round Square Exchange Opportunities. Uh, Mr. Paul Esmond is responsible for our Grand Square Exchange Program and we have lots of partner schools throughout Australia in Singapore and Christ College which is a boys school in New Zealand and um, we uh, have had great success with reciprocal exchanges um, over the years. Um, it's a two week exchange so you, your child would head off and live with a family at one of those partner schools and then we would reciprocate and so they would come and live with you and attend Ballarat Grammar for a two week period. Uh, if uh, you have a child who is interested in undertaking this, there aren't any guarantees that we will be successful in achieving uh, an exchange for your child because we actually need to identify a school and then there has to be a student at that school who is a suitable candidate who we would be willing to um, initiate an exchange with. Um, as you can imagine, that is not a straightforward process always um, and we've just got to make sure the fit is as right as possible um, and so a lot of work goes into that but sometimes we do fall short but we do endeavour to do our very best for everyone that does apply for an exchange uh, and there's enormous growth and um, there's challenge in this but there's enormous growth um, and it does lead on quite nicely to year 10 exchanges that are six weeks to a term um, and they are international so they can be anywhere with um, one of our over 180 partner schools through the Round Square organisation. Um, these are two of our girls who headed off last year to Singapore, our first two students to attend um, an exchange in Singapore. And, um, and it is terrific that you get to meet someone in a different part of the world that you didn't know existed and you become lifelong friends. Um, and that's an amazing experience for people at that age. Uh, as I mentioned, the Round Square School, you can 
Um, this is a, a funnel of the school in Singapore, but um, our students can head off to really unusual and different environments to Ballarat Grammar. And we often find that students come back and identify what they truly love about Grammar and really appreciate our community more through this experience. Um, St Phillips in, in Alice Springs is another ex extreme example of the types of communities that you can uh, find yourself in if an exchange is of appeal to you. It is a whole family program, so um, the reciprocation of their student means that there is obviously weekend entertainment and they become part of your family for two weeks. So we need to have a round table discussion about whether this is for you, um, but there's families that have been lifelong friends with their exchange partners. Uh, the cost of it is the cost of a return airfare. So um, it's a very affordable 